Hello. In this lecture, we are going to talk about percussion instruments. If you write for percussion instruments, you have to consider the following points. Of course, you have to choose your instruments first, and then you should divide them between players, how many percussion players you have, and how many percussion instruments each of them play. And which mallets, beaters, and sticks to use. And finally, the notation. Let's start with the notation. First of all, the notation of the pitched instruments are easy because they are written on a five-line stuff with a clef. But the notation of the unpitched instruments are a little controversial. There are some composers or orchestrators who use a five-line stuff also for the unpitched instruments and notate, for example, in the spaces, the tom-toms, four tom-toms, and they use this one for symbol and this one for bass drum and those three lines for I don't know wood blocks this is not a good notation this notation could be fine for a drum set for example in which the instruments are more or less standardized and the notation doesn't have to be 100% precise but in the orchestra for a percussion ensemble of the orchestra, this is not a good notation because it is very difficult to read, very difficult to differentiate the instruments. You should always consider that the players look at the notes from a distance and they have to move themselves because they play mostly multiple instruments successively or at the same time and they have to look at the conductor they have to look to each other and then they have to look at the notes and differentiate the instruments this is not an optimal notation for a percussion player let's take a look at some literature examples this is a work by Maurice Ravel and at the beginning, we have an instrumentation page which shows all the instruments which are used in the score. So, and here, a timpani. Timpani player plays only timpani, no other additional instruments. And then we have the percussion instruments. And we don't have an indication of which player plays which instruments. At that time, this notation was completely okay. The composer wrote the instruments and then the players in the orchestra made this division. So we don't hear all the instruments at the same time, of course, but there are some passages in which it is not possible that all the instruments are played by the same player. For example, here we have three instruments to be played at the same time and we need multiple players. But we don't have this indication here. It was made at that time by the players. And this is the notation I recommend. A separate line for every instrument. This is also the method we use today. Another example also by Ravel and in the second movement multiple instruments and each of them has its own one line stuff because they are one line instruments. If you use multiple instruments of the same family, if you use two tom toms for example, then I recommend to use a stuff with two lines. If you use three cymbals, for example, I recommend to use a stuff with three lines and use only the lines, not the space between them. So, that was an example from the past. 
And this is an example from our time, a very good example. Magnus Lindberg, a contemporary composer from Finland. And its notation is excellent for the percussion. We see here the percussion ensemble. And it is divided between players. This is the first player, this is the second player, and this is the third player. Let's take a look at the line at the beginning. They don't play anything, so the instruments are not indicated. And for example, here on the second page, we see that the first player plays bass drum on the one line and the second player plays tom tom on the one line and the third player plays triangle and we have also a timpani which is an individual a separated player so what if the instrument changes from bass drum it was bass drum and now it changes into crotalis and you see the stuff changes and also it's also true for the others avoid multiple lines for one player unless it is really necessary that two instruments are played at the same time etc if this is not the case then avoid multiple staves for an individual player so change of the stuff and indicate the new instrument. It is an excellent notation and it is the notation which is preferred by the most of the percussion players. And as you see bongos, he used two bongos in this piece and we have two lines. One for the lower bongo and the other one is for the higher bongo. And likewise, two suspended symbols, one line for one symbol and another line for the other symbol. And this is another work by the same composer. The instrumentation page is here and you see percussion, three players. This is the first player, the first player plays vibraphone, mark three, claves, etc. The second player plays those instruments and the third player plays these instruments. And the first percussion begins with bass drum, which is indicated and only one line. And then the third percussion comes in and plays tam-tam. You see also an indication of the beater with soft beater. So this is the notation I recommend. Let's clear the terminology. What does mallet mean? What does beater mean? And what does stick mean? When do we use them? Mallets used for keyboard instruments like vibraphone, marimba or xylophone. Beaters used for other instruments such as the tam-tam -tam and gongs and sticks used for all drums. If you know what kind of mallet, beater or stick will produce the desired sound exactly, then you can also indicate them. But it is not a must, it is not an obligation. You can also leave it to the performer. If you make the sound you desire clear in the notation, then the percussion player can choose the appropriate one. But if you know what you are doing, you can indicate them. We have some symbols for them. There are many more symbols. I didn't include all of them, but you can find them in some instrumentation and percussion specific books. The book by Sevsai is very rich in this part. We divide percussion instruments mainly into two categories. This division is very important. First, instruments of definite pitch and instruments of indefinite pitch. 
That means in some instruments we hear the exact pitches like marimba or timpani or xylophone. And we write these instruments on the five line stuff with a clef. Uh, sometimes on grand stuff, on multiple staves, for example marimba, we write marimba mostly on two staves like piano. Uh, always on five line stuff with a clef. And on the other hand, we have instruments of indefinite pitch like bass drum or snare drum or cymbals. We cannot determine the pitch. There are also some instruments in between, but we can put them in one of these categories. It is not possible to talk about every percussion instrument in this video. What I'm going to do is to try to give an overview of the most common percussion instruments of the orchestra. Beginning with the xylophone. Xylophone is made of wood and it has a high and penetrating sound. This is an example. In the first time we are going to hear it in forte dynamic and in the second time we are going to hear it in pianissimo dynamic. It is an octave transposing instrument. The sound will be one octave higher than the notation. Let's hear it. Xylophone is played by mallets and mallets can be hard, soft or medium. And this is marimba. It is similar to xylophone but it is larger and the sound is not as hard as the one of the xylophone. It sounds as written and it can also go lower, much lower than the xylophone. Let's hear this example. Probably you heard, especially those passages, those tremolos in the low register sound excellent in this instrument. And from the same family, this is a vibraphone. The name of the instrument, vibraphone, indicates a feature, a very special feature that the other instruments of this family don't have, which is the vibrato. The instrument works with electricity and it has a motor. And you see here some mechanism. This mechanism can be put into circulation through electricity and the sound gets a vibrato-like effect. The speed of the motor can also be adjusted. The speed could be slow or medium or fast. And you see also here a paddle. This is the only instrument of this family which has a sustained paddle. And the instrument is made of metal. Here is an example. We are going to hear the passage two times. In the first time, we are going to hear it with motor on. The speed is medium. And on the second time, we are going to hear it with motor off. Let's listen to it.
Vibraphone can also be played by cello bow. Let's listen to this example. Once again, in the first time, we are going to hear it with the motor on and in the second time with the motor off. This is Glockenspiel. It is similar to vibraphone, but it has no pedal and no motor. The sound is two octaves higher. In the first time, the passage will be played in piano dynamic and in the second time it will be played in forte dynamic. Let's listen to it. And those are chimes. In Samuel Adler's book, it is called chimes, but in the modern scores, it is called tubular bells. So, this is a set of tubular bells or chimes, and it has also a sustain pedal. It is played by hammers. This is an example, and you see also the indication of the pedal. Let's listen to it. Those are crotales, they are small metal plates giving definite pitches, but the sound is two octaves higher than the notation. Let's listen to it. Like vibraphone, crotalis can also be played by a cello bow. Let's listen to it.
those are timpanis. They are the oldest members of the percussion section in the symphony orchestra. And we have five different sizes. It is indicated by inch, 32 inch, 28 inch, 25 inch, etc. And each of them has a particular range. For example, a 28 inch timpani can be tuned between F2 and C3. Timpani has also a pedal mechanism. It is seen here, you see. And it works in a similar way like the harp. It can change the tuning of the instrument. For example, we said 28-inch timpani can be tuned between F2 and C3. Let's say we tuned it on G, we can change the tune to B, for example. But it takes time. If you want to change the tuning of one timpani, then you should give the player some time to do it. Trills and tremolos are very common techniques, playing techniques on the timpani, and they are both the same. There are no difference at all. You can write it either as trill or as tremolo. The result will be exactly the same. Tremolo on different timpanis is also possible. In the orchestras, we have usually two to four timpanis tuned on different pitches. In the classical works, we have mostly two. And in the modern works, in the romantic and modern works, we have usually four timpanis. It could also be more, but four is almost a standard today. This is a sound example, let's listen to it. As I said, with paddle we can change the tuning of the timpani. We have four timpanis and we have a B flat here, then it is changed to B natural. But as I said, it takes time you have to give the player some time to do it. Another example from the literature from the Symphony No. 9 by Beethoven. Let's listen to it. And another literature example by Berlioz. In this example, we have two timpani players, the first player and the second player. Let's listen to it. And a final example. Let's hear it. The instruments we talked about until this point were the instruments of definite pitch. Beginning with cymbals, we are going to talk about some instruments of indefinite pitch. Cymbals can be played by multiple ways. They can be in pairs. So they will be played by crashing them to each other. They can be suspended, like we see here, or it can be hi-hat. Hi-hat cymbals are not usual members of the percussion ensemble of the orchestra, but they can be used in some special settings. So, as I said, pair of cymbals, suspended cymbal and hi-hat cymbals. This is an example of pair of symbols. We are going to hear this part, the first half, 
in forte dynamic in the first time and then in the second time in piano dynamic. Let's hear it. By the way, this is the notation I do not recommend. I recommend only one line if there is only one instrument. And this is an example of suspended symbols. As we see, we have three symbols here written on the lines. Also, this one, this notation is not recommended. If you have three symbols, then I recommend to use a stuff with three lines only and use the lines. Let's listen to it. This is the triangle. It is a metal stick in triangle shape and it is played with another metal stick. Let's hear this sound example. Tom-toms and gongs are other very common instruments. Um, the order is wrong, by the way. Those are gongs and these are tom-toms. Actually, gongs are instruments of definite pitch and tom-toms are instruments of indefinite pitch. But in Adler's book, they are both classified as instruments of indefinite pitch, but actually gongs produce more or less definite pitches. So, the tom-tom is here and gongs are here. We have three gongs and one tom-tom. Once again, the notation is not recommended. In this case, I would recommend to use one tom-tom line and write the tom-tom on this line and this is let vibrate tie and then another stuff and the correct version is that it is a, an instrument of definite pitch written with f clef and this is for gongs and this is tom-tom let's listen to the example In this example, the gongs were not usual gongs, I guess. They were something in between, between definite and indefinite pitch. Then we have wood blocks. We have actually many sizes of wood blocks, but it is very usual to use them in a set of five wood blocks. And this is the notation 
on the first time we are going to hear it forte and in the second time we are going to hear it pianissimo let's listen to it And temple blocks. Temple blocks are very similar to wood blocks, only the material they made of is different. They are made of plastic, I guess. And this is an example. Also here, in the first time, forte, in the second time, piano. Let's listen to it. Of course, a very famous instrument, this is the snare drum. It is called snare drum because below the instrument we have these snares that gives the characteristic sound of the instrument. Here we have an example with very characteristic playing techniques, tremolo or trill, both the same, exactly the same, and with grace notes. So in the first time we are going to hear it in fortissimo dynamic and in the second time in pianissimo dynamic. Let's hear it. And the abbreviation at the end means rim shot, meaning hit on the edge of the instrument. Another example, at the end we have once again the rim shot. And on the second time we are going to hear it without snares. It is adjustable. We have a mechanism here and with this mechanism we can cancel the snares or include them. Let's listen to it. You see the sound changes extremely. And this is tenor drum, very similar to the snare drum, but it doesn't have snares. An example. And another very famous member of the drum family, bass drum. This is an example, we are going to hear it forte in the first time and piano in the second time. And I like to repeat it, the notation is not recommended. The notation should be one line stuff, because we have only one instrument here. And another sound example, in the first time we are going to hear it with regular mallets, and in the second time with wood mallets, you will hear that the sound will be muddier. Let's hear it.
And this is the Tom Tom family. They are very common in the percussion ensemble of the orchestra. And here is an example. The notation is not recommended. If you have four Tom Toms, then use a four line stuff. And use only the lines, not the spaces. So, in the first time, fortissimo, in the second time, pianissimo. Let's hear it. As I said, the percussion instruments are extremely rich in variety and it is not possible to cover all of them. That was just an overview of the mostly used percussion instruments in the orchestra. That's all for this lecture. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture.